sing this together. Oh, come on. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Good morning. My name is Gregory Chambers. I'm a member of the Deacon Ministry here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. I just want to welcome you this morning on behalf of the pastor, Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr. and Regina Dunnigan, our First Lady, and all the members of Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. We thank you for viewing us online and if it's your first time, maybe your second, and maybe your third, whether you're just looking to be looking or you are looking for a place to worship, we would love to have you here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church, where we love, we care, we share. It's a family affair. Our mission is to make disciples. Our 2020 focus is to make healthy, dynamic disciples. We thank you for viewing us, so sit back and relax and enjoy the service. Praise the Lord, everybody. We've come to give him all the glory that's due his name. No matter what's going on in the world, we are still declaring that we love the Lord. Uh, come on, somebody ought to just shout hallelujah right there. He's the king of kings, the great I am. The song goes like this. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you.
I love you. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. More than anything. More than anything. I love you. 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 More than anything. More than anything. Come on, if you love the Lord, just laugh and she'll love on him right there. Come on, if you love him, just tell him how much you love him right there. Good morning, Cornerstone family. It is Reverend Collier. I have the honor of serving as the Minister of Music and Arts and Worship here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. And next week is a very, very exciting week. We are celebrating Christmas at Cornerstone. And so you may be asking, how are we gonna do this in the midst of a pandemic? We have two exciting events that we want you to partake in. And so on Friday, December the 18th, we are doing a special Christmas tree lighting ceremony and a drive-by. That's right, we have gifts because we want to personally extend our appreciation to each and every one of our members on behalf of our senior pastor and our first lady. And so next Friday, December the 18th at 5 p.m. We are going to be in the back parking lot and we have some things that we want to pour into your life as you all get the opportunity to drive by and we can wave and say hello and you can see your leadership team and you can see pastor and first lady and we will have some gifts to give to you and your children. And so we want all of our members to come out next Friday, December the 18th at 5 p.m. for our Christmas drive by. And and then at 6 p.m., right out front, we are going to light up an amazing, big, beautiful Christmas tree. Why? Because we want the world to know that Cornerstone is still here. We are still surviving even in the midst of the pandemic. And so as people drive by the church, they are going to see all of the decorations and all of the light of God. We are going to be a light in the midst of a dark time. And so next Friday at 5 p.m., we are inviting you to come for our Christmas drive-in and then stay for the Christmas tree lighting ceremony at 6 6 p.m. And then next Sunday, I want you to invite all of your friends and family to join us right here on YouTube because we are going to celebrate Christmas as best as we can with gifts and musical performances and artists from some of our friends and family right here within Cornerstone. And so it is still an exciting weekend as we celebrate the coming of Christ. So make sure that you meet us here Next Friday, December the 18th at 5 p.m. is going to be a celebration that we will always remember. God bless you, and I love you, and we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Father in heaven, we come before you right now and just thanking you, dear Lord. We thank you for an opportunity to provide this service visually. We thank you for all those who are online and viewing this service, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for providing us with people who support Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church and also care about the welfare of your people. Most importantly, Father God, we just thank you for being here. We know that you will make your presence known this morning. We thank you for that. We also thank you, dear Lord, that you're in everything and every detail in our lives. We thank you, Father God, that you've made it possible for us to be in your family, in your kingdom, through your son, Jesus Christ. No one, dear Lord, loves us as much as you do. We just thank you, dear Lord, and we praise you, we glorify you, and we lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we lift our hands to the holy God. We lift our hands to the faithful God. We magnify the name of the Lord. Somebody ought to just give him the glory and give him the honor that's due his name. Wherever you are, you just ought to open up your mouth and begin to call on the name of the Lord right there. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. 
and we glorify your name. You're holy and you're righteous. Come on, we love on him. Come on, open up your mouth right there. Be glorified. Be magnified. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. The song goes like this. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. Come on, lift your voice. Say, I call you holy. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy. You are so holy. You are so holy to yeah. me. I call you I holy. Call you holy. Your, name Your name is holy. holy. You are holy. And holy. And holy you'll be. Yeah. 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 Come on, said I call you faithful. I call you faithful. Your name, is, Your name is faithful. You are so faithful. You are so faithful to you me. You never let me down. I call you faithful. I call you faithful. Your name, Your name is faithful. Faithful you are. Faithful you will be. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Your name is awesome. You are so you awesome. are so awesome to me. You're awesome in all your ways. I call you awesome. Your name, your name is awesome. Awesome you are. And awesome, and awesome, awesome you are. to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Your name is healer. You are a healer. You, you are a healer to me. You healed my body and you made me whole. I call you healer. Your name is Your healer. Your name is healer. Healer, you are a healer. We 
worship yeah. Him. We glorify yeah. Him. We magnify yeah. Him. We lift Him yeah. high. We want to tell yeah. Him. You want to tell yeah. Him. You want to yeah. tell yeah. Him.
Hallelujah. 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 Somebody out there needs the Lord. Somebody out there needs the Lord. You've been in some desperate situations. And I dare you to cry out to Jesus. He has not forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. You're still on his mind. You're still on his mind. Come on, somebody call on the name of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father, we need you. Father, we need you. Father, we're trusting on you. Father, we lean and depend on you. Oh, oh yes, we do. Somebody tell the Lord, yes. Yeah. 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 Let the church say yes. 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 Mm. Say yes. 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 And lift your voice and tell him yes. Yeah. Come on and lift those hands and tell him yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord, we love you. Yes, oh. Lord, we'll worship you. Yes, Lord, we'll align with yeah. your will and your word. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, for this is God's day that he has made especially for you and for me, and we are definitely going to rejoice and be glad in it. It is Advent season, and it is the time that we declare joy to the world. The Lord, our Lord, our Savior has come, and we are glad. Father, we come to you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, thanking you, Father, for your glorious gift that you have chosen to give to the world, your one and only Son, Jesus the Christ. Father, now as we are about to break the bread of life, Father God, we thank you for this time and this opportunity, and we pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will superintend our time together, that your name will be lifted up and glorified, and that your people will be blessed. This is our prayer and our praise. We pray it all in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, and everyone in agreement say, amen, amen, and amen. Well, there is nothing new under the sun. That's right, nothing new under the sun. As a matter of fact, things that are happening now in our country, well, they've happened before, and unfortunately, they're going to happen again. As a matter of fact, the very first Advent season was much like the season that we are experiencing now. You know, Advent is a time for anticipation. It's a time for celebration of God's gift to the world. And yet, the anticipation that the shepherds felt as they went to see the babe in the manger, 
the celebration that the wise men engaged in as, as they finally laid eyes on the Christ child, that anticipation and celebration was actually tempered by chaos and confusion that was going on. All right, so let's take a look at what was happening during that time. And it was very similar to the kinds of things that we are facing now. So let's start by looking at the national leadership. The Jews at that time were governed by the Romans who had appointed Herod to be king of the Jews. Now, the big problem with, with that was this, that he was a dictator who was ruling over them, and to make matters worse, he was not a Jew, rather he was an Edomite. The Greeks call it an Edomian. In other words, he was a descendant of Esau. And you remember who Esau was? Esau and Jacob were twin brothers. And Esau became the progenitor of the Edomites. Jacob became the progenitor of the Israelites. And so we have the Edomites and the Israelites became fierce enemies one with the other. And so we have this situation where the Jews have their enemy ruling over them. But Herod, Herod was sly, and he was an opportunist. In other words, he was a political con man. Mm -hmm. And so, in order to gain favor with his evangelical base, you know, Pharisees and the Sadducees, the priests and the Levites, he decided to build a wall. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, did I say build a wall? No, I, I meant build the temple. Yes. So Zerubbabel's temple that the Jews had rebuilt after they had come back from exile in Babylon was only a shadow of the former glory of Solomon's temple. And that was always a problem for the Jews. So here comes Herod, and he decides that he is going to restore the temple to the magnificence that it had prior to it being destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. So he was going to do this. Why? Not because he loved the Jews, but because he loved being in power and he wanted to keep his evangelical base in line. But he loved to build. So he not only rebuilt the temple, but he also built a palace for himself. It was actually a fortress. And he built it in the southern part of Israel at a place called Herodium. Because, you know, he loved his name. So he put his name on the place that he had built and called it Herodium. So... We have Herod as a leader. That was the kind of leader he was. But what about Herod the man? Well, Herod had three main wives. He had more wives than that, but there were three main ones. And he had nine sons. But Herod was a jealous, cruel man who really only cared about himself. He was mentally unstable and easily influenced. And so his sister, knowing this about him, poisoned his mind about his second wife. And so <laughs> in 7 BC, just on a suspicion, a suspicion of infidelity, Herod had his wife killed. But you know, he didn't stop there. He not only killed her, but he killed the two sons that he had with her. He killed her brother, her grandfather, and her mother. Yes, that's, that's the kind of person that was ruling over Israel at that time as king of the Jews. And then, three years after that massacre occurred, this insecure man then decided to kill his firstborn son because he suspected that he was disloyal to him. Mm -hmm. 
You see, that, that was Herod the Great, the, the narcissist. But he loved the title, Herod the Great, King of the Jews. And so he was willing to do anything, anything at all that was necessary in order for him to keep his title. So you can imagine when the wise men showed up and asked Herod, where is he who is born king of the Jews? Huh. Well, you know, Herod became apoplectic. Yes, he just didn't know what to do. A king is born to take over my place? So the Bible tells us that when Herod heard those words, it says, Herod was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. So yes, that was the chaos and confusion surrounding that first advent with an egotistical, unstable leader who refused to concede to the new king. And so Herod made a decision. He decided to con the wise men. And he called them into the Oval Office for a private meeting and told them, go to Bethlehem, search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Hmm. Of course, we know <laughs> he didn't want to worship him. He wanted to kill him. But that was the con that he was perpetuating on these wise men. And that's the condition facing Mary and Joseph on that first Advent season. They were faced with having to deal with this leader who was emotionally, mentally unstable, and now wanted to kill their son. And they had already been dealing with a lot of personal trauma. You, you know, um, Mary had become pregnant out of wedlock <laughs> and had to endure the gossip and the looks and the stares of people. And then they had to uproot their lives, travel to Bethlehem for a government-imposed census. And then, because they were unable to find a suitable place to give birth, she ended up giving birth to her firstborn son in a barn. Yeah. But now, now things had settled down, and it was two years later, and they were now living in Bethlehem. They were in a house, and here comes the wise men. And they bring extravagant gifts, bowing down in worship of the Christ child, their child, and bringing gifts to celebrate the king of the Jews. So there was excitement, there was celebration. However, it was short-lived because that very night, that very night, once again they were uprooted and they had to take flight in the middle of the night and travel hundreds of miles to a foreign land, to Egypt. Now, so what we have is Mary and Joseph have to endure the highs and lows of these emotional times. Excitement and celebration because of the wise men and their worship of, of their Christ child. And then having to flee that very night in order to save his life. So they had to deal with these highs and lows. And how did they do it? How did Mary and Joseph manage to handle these differences in their emotions and the status that they were enduring? Well, they were able to do so. And they actually did three things in order to manage their situation. And so we can learn from them and do these same three things to help us manage the situation that we are in because it is so similar. There's the celebration and anticipation of a new national leader that was elected, and yet at the same time there is upheaval by the current leader 
who refuses to concede and is causing chaos and confusion in our country. So Mary and Joseph, though, were able to handle it. And how did they do so? Well, they did these three things. First of all, they kept their minds focused on God. Mm -hmm. They kept focus on God, not on the situation. That's what Joseph did. Remember when the angel told him to take Mary to be his wife, when he was confused as to what to do, when he learned uh, of her pregnancy and he didn't know what to do, but the angel told him not to be afraid to take Mary for his wife. And so he focused on doing and obeying what he was told in spite of the negative consequences, in spite of the gossip, in spite of being ostracized, he did not look at the situation, but rather kept his focus on God. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep our mind focused on the main thing and keep the main thing the main thing. So instead of focusing on the upheaval, you know, it's really easy to do that. It's easy to focus on the chaos and on the confusion. But what we want to do is to focus our mind, our attention on God. And the promise that God gives us is this, that he will keep us, you and me, in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because we put our trust in him. So we can trust in the Lord, listen, with all our heart, leaning not unto our own understanding in all our ways, acknowledging him and then allowing him to direct our paths. So the first thing in order to manage all the highs and lows, the ups and downs, the chaos and confusion, we need to keep our minds focused on God. And secondly, we learn this from Mary and Joseph, is to keep your ears attuned to his voice. Yes, stay attuned to the voice of the Lord. You see, Mary's ear was in tune with God's voice. You remember when the angel came to her to give her the news and, and, and tell her that, she, though she was a virgin, would bring forth the Son of God. And she was able to receive that message with her spiritual ears because she was in tune with the Spirit of God. And so she was able to receive the message and she was able to say, let it be to me even as you have said. So what she heard, the word that she heard from the Lord because she was attuned to the spirit of the Lord, she was able to accept it. So the question that we need to ask ourselves is, are we listening to God's voice? Are we attuned to hearing what it is that God is saying to us in the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of the national trauma, in the midst of maybe personal situations that you may be facing, are you listening and in tune to the Spirit of God? And then not just being in tune to what he is saying, to hear what he is saying, but also to receive it. Because, you know, sometimes God doesn't always tell us what we want to hear. You know, we want things to go one way, and mm, sometimes that may not be the direction in which God has planned and purpose for us. But if we are focused on God, and if our ears are attentive to his voice, then it, will be it would be possible to do step number three. And what step number three is to keep your heart ready and willing to obey, to do whatever it is that God says to do, even if you have to move on a moment's notice, because that's what Mary and Joseph had to do. 
<laughs> when the angel came to Joseph in a dream that night and told them that they had to leave. He got up, immediately told Mary what the angel had said. And they had to pack up at that moment <laughs> without any notice and pack up with a two-year-old child and leave town in the middle of the night to go to a strange land, a foreign land, to go to Egypt. So sometimes when God's direction and purpose and plan for us is different than what we expect or what we want, the mind that is focused on God and the ear that is attuned to his voice and the heart that is ready to obey will say, yes, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And we are able to say this because <laughs> Father knows best. Yes, he does. Father knows best. There are times when it doesn't seem that way. There are times when it doesn't feel that way. But when you trust in the Lord, you trust that he knows what's best. And so you're able you and I are able to follow God wherever it is that he leads us. In the midst of the chaos and confusion, we can still have the peace of God that passes all understanding because we keep our mind focused on him, we keep our ears attentive to his voice, and we keep our hearts ready to obey. So this is how we are able to manage, navigate, and negotiate the chaos, the confusion that we find in the midst of this Advent season. And so as a result of that, we can still maintain the celebration and the anticipation of God's grand gift to us, his son, Jesus Christ, that he sent into the world, into this chaotic world. But he too was able to manage and negotiate all of it, to die on a cross and then rise victorious with the keys of death and hell so that we through him can have life everlasting. So we are able to celebrate we are able to anticipate this beautiful Advent season. Why? Because we have Jesus. And Jesus is the reason for this season. So listen, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you are not able to have that celebration and that anticipation. But at this time, in this Advent season, he is here and he's available to you. So all you have to do is to open your heart and receive him into your life so that you are able to have the joy and the peace that comes from this season of Advent, the peace and the joy that only he can bring. So if you want to accept Christ, just say this prayer with me. Father God, we thank you for your son, for Jesus Christ, the gift that you gave in order to bring salvation to us and peace to our hearts. So I invite Jesus into my life, into my heart right now, and so that I can have the peace and the joy that only he can give. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you so much for your support of this ministry. You know, even during the pandemic, we are still working. Uh, you may not be able to see it per se, but we are still working. And we thank you for your continued support of this ministry and what it is that we are doing as we continue uh, to reach out to those who are in need. So... Uh, you bring your offerings. There are three ways that we have. 
in order for you to continue in your support of this church. You can use the um, app called Givelify, or you can use PayPal through our website. You can connect to PayPal, and you can also just simply mail it into the office. And at our a mailing address, you would see it there on your screen. So we want to, as we bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord, we want to have our tithing uh, affirmation. And you can join in with us right where you are. Because God's word declares that one-tenth of our income already belongs to him, we bring our tithes to the church or you send them to the church in this case, and present it to the Lord in loving and cheerful obedience. Father, we thank you so much for your people, for their faithfulness, for their giving. Father God, you are the primary giver, and so we follow your lead. As you have given to us, we in turn give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. So Father God, we ask that you would take the offerings that your people have so graciously given, and that you would give us the wisdom to use it to the best use possible to spread your kingdom and to spread your word. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' matchless name. And everyone say amen and amen. Well, we are so delighted that you spend this time with us. We want to remind you that you need to just check your email. We send out the bulletin with a lot of information so that you can know what's going on and you can keep track of what's happening. So be sure to check your email and get the information. If you need any um, help from the church, you can call the church office at 302-762-9601. All right, and leave a message with your name and your contact information, and we will be sure to get back to you and to give you whatever help and support you may need. All right, well, with all hearts and minds clear, we are ready to close out our service for today. Father God, once again, we thank you, we praise you, we honor and adore you for being with us, for being with your people, God. In the midst of the chaos and confusion, God, you are our peace. You are our joy, and we are able to celebrate and anticipate all that you are doing for us. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in the grace and the peace of our loving God. Amen. <laughs>